Last year I made this Urban Decay concrete lamp and a few people watched it. Damn! And in this video we're going to use some new LED technology to take this idea to the next level. Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. This project actually started about five years ago when I came across this amazing Instagram account called Luke Lamp. He makes these beautiful, looping, flowing, ropey LED chandelier things that just blew my mind. I've always wanted to put my twist on this style of light, but the problem was I couldn't find those ropey LED lights anywhere until a month ago. Found these online. Once I got my hands on these, I knew I had to combine that ropey Luke Lamp style with the Urban Decay look that I used in the lamp I created last year. The idea is to have these ropes draped around rebar suspended between two chunks of concrete. And before we get into the build, I have to encourage you guys to go check out Luke Lamp. He's an amazing artist. I'll leave links below. And with that, let's jump to the build, start cutting up the rebar that will hang these ropey LEDs from. So here I'm cutting down all the pieces of rebar. It's a pretty simple process, but I wanted to address some comments that I got last time that I did this. People pointed out that I didn't need to weld rebar. They said I could just bend it and wire it together. But to me, this just isn't as much fun. Sometimes you gotta have a little fun and welding is super fun for me. So I'm gonna weld this, okay? All right, cool. Well, let's cue the montage of this going together. Oops. <laughs> Wrong glasses. My eyes! Oh goodness, that was almost a mistake. I mean, it was a mistake, but at least I had some glasses on. Sunspot's better than a burnt eyeball. Uh, a little crooked, which is kind of what we want because it's supposed to look like a real column, which wouldn't be welded perfectly square anyways. With the rebar frame done, we turn to the melamine form that we're gonna pour the concrete into. Now, last time I just made a big rectangular box and it was pretty simple, but this time I wanted to reuse pieces of melamine from previous concrete projects. And I get a lot of comments about the environmental impact of concrete projects and I do think it is important. So saving and reusing pieces of melamine is a little thing that I can do to reduce the impact my projects have. This did make it a bit more complex because I didn't have enough five foot long pieces to do a full box. So instead I made two open-ended small boxes at each end of the form and left the middle open. Now with the somewhat oddly shaped form for this project explained, it's time for another episode of everyone's favorite Calk Talk, which is the same as every episode of Calk Talk. I apply a layer of paste wax to the melamine, lay down a generous layer of 100% silicone caulk, run a metal fonded ball tool over all the caulk lines. Metal fonded ball tool pushes excess caulk to the sides, leaves a clean line over the seam, and the layer of paste wax makes it easy to peel the excess caulk away once it cures, leaving a perfect caulk line. And that's it for this episode of Calk Talk. Next up is the secret to getting that urban decay look without having to do any chiseling or wait years for it to naturally erode. It's just play sand. I just fill up a bucket with the sand, wet it down so it's nice and wet, and then go to work basically building sand castles. After filling in an initial base of about three quarters of an inch with the sand, I added the rebar structure and then built the rest of the sand castle walls around the rebar structure. So the rebar structure will be suspended in the form and embedded in the concrete blocks on either end of the lamp. With the sand walls built up, it's time to think about wiring to the LED ropes and I'm just gonna be running it through conduit, which I bent with the standard conduit bender. I super glued on some copper to the ends that will be exposed though, so that it'll have a little bit cleaner look. All the rebar is gonna end up being hidden inside the concrete. I then pushed the copper part of the pipe through the sand so that only the copper would actually be exposed and the rest of the conduit would be hidden inside the concrete blocks. And doing it this way is gonna create a path I can run wiring through inside the concrete block after the whole lamp is built. To give the full decayed look, I want to have some sea gravel, some little stones that are going to be exposed at the edge of the concrete. I'm going to strategically place some of these rocks right into the sand and they'll bond to the concrete at the edges right where you need them and see them and I can control the aesthetic that way. Trust me, when it all comes together, I've got a feeling about this one. 
All right, guys, it's concrete day. I always get super stoked for this. As always, we're using Fish Tones HP 50 mix. We're gonna do about 40 pounds of that. I think it should be enough. I've also got this Featherlight filler, which is gonna reduce the weight by like 10 or 20% of the mix. If we're gonna be hanging this from the ceiling, we definitely wanna keep it as lightweight as possible. So this time I'm adding PVA fibers instead of glass fibers. It does increase strength, but we don't need as much strength as glass fibers would because it's just a thick core. But these are just gonna kind of reduce cracking, get a little bit of strength, and more importantly, they won't show in the surface because we're just gonna pour this in all at once. All right, got a nice consistency for self-leveling concrete, so ugh, let's go dump it on it. Clamp, make sure that it doesn't spread too much. Give it a little pat. All right, we'll let this cure overnight in 24 to 36 hours. So we'll come back and uh, demold it. And then the real exciting stuff happens. It's been a few years since I told you guys how Simply Safe's 24 7 monitoring service busted me on a job site, landed me in jail. Well, I finally got out and things aren't any better. Now Simply Safe's got this new smart alarm camera, it works with their live guard protection. It provides a Simply Safe monitoring agent with two-way communication during a break-in. As soon as I got out of the clink, I needed to work. First job I did, climbed through the window, Simply Safe alarm starts going off, and I was shocked to hear a live person tell me the police were already called and on their way. When I heard that, I freaked out, I had to get out of the house right away. I didn't have time to take anything with me. There was a little bowl of Halloween candy sitting by the door. All I got was a fistful of candy bars. I make my money with sticky fingers, not butter fingers. I got no idea what I'm gonna do. Seems like everybody's getting Simply Safe these days. It's a comprehensive security system that's incredibly easy to install on your own. I hear new devices like the smart alarm camera take less than a minute to install. And now they even have professional installation available for those who don't want to do it themselves. And to make things even worse for me, Simply Safe is super affordable. They've got plans starting at less than a dollar a day with no long-term contract. And now I'm hearing you get up to 50% off your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for fast protect monitoring at simplysafe.com slash industrial. I've got no idea how I'm gonna make a living. All I can do is ask you from the bottom of my heart, please don't sign up for Simply Safe. Don't visit simplysafe.com slash industrial. Leave your doors unlocked and your valuables by your window and please, please, don't buy Simply Safe. The views expressed by Rob R. do not reflect the views of the Industrial Maker channel. I highly encourage you to head to simplysafe.com slash industrial to get up to 50% off your Simply Safe system. There's no safe like Simply Safe. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. It's a super dreary day outside here in Chicago, but we're gonna have concrete Christmas anyway. I'm excited to see what comes out of this form when we take the walls off. Other than the sand being a little bit of a mess, everything came out of the form looking pretty good. So I carried the light into the garage to clean everything up. And I started using a wire brush like I did last time, but then I realized I could just use a hose to wash it off. And that was so much easier and quicker. One of those times where you think to yourself, why did I not think of that in the first place? Now let's chat about how we're gonna connect the LED rope to the fixture. The copper pipe I embedded in the concrete was three quarter inch because originally when this project started, all I'd found was this three quarter inch RGB rope. RGB is great because it looks cool, but it isn't that practical as a chandelier that's gonna hang over a dining room table where this one's gonna live because the regular white light honestly just doesn't look that good. It's a really blue cafeteria light looking thing, but I was willing to settle on this as a proof of concept mainly because I couldn't find a warm white version of this anywhere. But a couple days after we poured the concrete, cameraman Cam was digging around online and found some warm white LED rope. Unfortunately, the warm white rope was one inch in diameter. No problem to attach this though. 
I just cut a little piece of one inch copper pipe and super glued it to the end of the one inch rope. Then I cut back the three quarter inch pipe and added a three quarter inch to one inch copper pipe adapter so that the one inch rope will just pressure fit right in. And this is great because it's gonna allow me to take the rope out if I ever want to change up the looping profile, move it to a different shape, or just get bored of it and wanna do something different. Now that we know how the LED rope is gonna to attach to the fixture, we gotta figure out how we're gonna safely hang this 100 pound behemoth from my ceiling. First thing, I cut off the excess conduit that isn't needed to run the LED wires through. Then it was time to create a closed loop from the rebar I'd left extending through the top of the concrete. To do this, I just heated the rebar with a torch until it was hot enough that I could bend it with a wrench. This is a pretty crude technique, but I think that's okay because it works well with the Urban Decay aesthetic. Once the two pieces were bent close together, I could get out my welder and connect them to close the loop. So I just started playing with options to hang it with a wire and I realized I've got a little problem because I need four hanging points and the way that I bent these, they're not perfectly perpendicular and when you pull it, these little hooks with the wire are gonna slide towards the middle and that's gonna make it unstable. Because this is sort of an industrial brutalist design, we have easy options. We're just gonna weld these little nubs of rebar right here, which are gonna give us a little stop so that those wires won't go anywhere. Since this light ended up weighing a little bit more than I expected, about 100 pounds, I'm gonna use some heavy duty eighth inch steel cable. It's rated for way more than this thing weighs, but figure belts and suspenders, literally. The wire is run through this little thing called a thimble to form a loop, and the loop is then secured on the other side with two saddle clamps. Now at this point, I learned a little something, regardless of whatever weight the steel cable is rated for, all that goes out the window if you don't use hot forge saddle clamps to suspend anything overhead. And this actually delayed the whole project for a week because I had to track those down online. But now that we have them, we can head upstairs to the living room to install the chandelier above the dining table. So to hang it from the ceiling, we've cut down some two by eights. We've stained them so that they will more closely match the existing joists. And we'll use some Simpson strong tie screws to attach those to the existing joists along with some extra bracing on the sides. For those that are wondering, Simpson strong tie screws have the same shearing strength like nails. So you could kind of use them where you would normally use nails. I like doing that because it's gonna give me some flexibility to move this structure should I ever move the dining table, which may happen when I put some more thought into actually designing the interior space of the living room. Heavy duty steel hooks, do as far as we can by hand. I'm gonna chuck that up. There we go. There's a test to see if that. Oh, okay. Well, there's a, there's a hole in the floor, but all right. All right, pretty good. So what we're gonna do is use ratchet straps. So we can just like set it in the ratchet straps, hoist it up with the ratchet straps to the height we want, get it positioned where we want under the table. Then we can safely undo and adjust the saddle clamps on the wire to get everything hung perfectly level. Or at least that's the plan. Remove these ratchet straps and see if it stays. Eh, it's pretty good. I will take it. Eventually, I've got an electrician coming back in a month or so. We're gonna have a junction box put in, have this hardwired so there's a wall switch. But for now, we're just gonna use a uh, power supply. Just the elbow we use, we should be able to just kinda ease it through. Look at that. Easy peasy. Boom, like that. Just wanna let you guys know that my favorite workwear brand and channel sponsor, Ariat Work, is having some amazing Black Friday sales. So go ahead and check out the links in the description below to get yourself or someone you love some great workwear for the holidays. So now's the fun part, but also something that we need to take a little bit of time with. We've essentially just created a canvas. You could drape the lights and loop them and tie them in knots, do whatever you want. Not all those configurations are gonna look good. There's definitely a little artistic touch to it. And I'm actually not sure exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna get up there and start playing with it and uh, hopefully we'll figure something out that looks good. You gotta look at it from a few different angles because there's gonna be multiple viewing points in the room. It's pretty cool, I feel like. Option one, let's see what else we can do. So option two almost kind of reminds me of like a filament in an Edison bulb on a larger scale. I feel like maybe the lighting element needs to be longer. 
over the table. So maybe I'm gonna think outside the box and try looping it over the concrete some, see what we get there. So I think that I like this configuration, but I'm curious, what do you guys think? Option one, two, or three? Think about your answer while we're looking at the beauty shots. Leave a comment, let me know, and I'll make a community post with the final configuration picked by you guys in the next few days. I am really excited about all the possibilities for cool lighting designs with the new LED ropes. If you guys are digging this build and this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe and bell. I love all you for following along on my journey. That's it for this time, and I'll see you guys next time.